What is up guys? Welcome aboard. We are back on the boat. Our 2006 341 Meridian with 6.2 Merc Cruiser Horizon engines. We're going to track down a leaking coolant issue on our heat exchangers and we're going to show you how it's done and how we fix it. So stick around. So these 6.2 Merc Cruiser engines are closed cooling, which means they have a heat exchanger here that flows raw water or seawater through one side of it and it cools off the coolant, the antifreeze coolant that flows through the engine block. So you don't have seawater running through the engine block. So it separates the two fluids so you don't get corrosion on the engine. Great system, but we're having a problem with it. So these heat exchangers work very similar to a radiator on a car. You have a, a coolant cap here. You open this up and you add coolant as needed to the engine like that. Use the same type of coolant they use in a car. The problem I'm having is that here is our coolant reservoir, the overflow. This should be filled up to at least a cold line. If you see, there's nothing in it. And there's very little coolant in there. We are losing coolant somewhere in the system. We don't see anything leaking on the motor. So my guess is it's leaking internally on this heat exchanger. These are brand new manifolds. They were replaced last year, so I don't expect any leaks in any of this. We haven't had any issues with it. So we're gonna narrow it down to a leaking heat exchanger between the two parts, between the raw water and the coolant side of the engine. So when the motor is running, the raw water pump is down here, pumps raw water or seawater up into this heat exchanger, flows through and it cools off the coolant. It then flows outside of the heat exchanger into the exhaust manifold elbow, cools off the exhaust fumes and goes out the side of the boat or under the boat. Being we don't see any leaks externally here on the engine, we're guessing our missing coolant is flowing to the raw water side of this cooler and flowing out the exhaust. So we're gonna open it up. We're gonna show you what we're gonna do to locate this problem and how we're gonna fix it. There are access caps here on the end of the heat exchanger, these round discs here. They have one bolt holding them on. There's also one on the far side. That gives you access to the cooling passages and you can see the, wall, the raw water side of the heat exchanger in through here. On this side, that's the coolant side. So let's open this up and see what we have inside. All right, so here's our heat exchanger. And it looks like we got some orange there leaking through. You can even see it a little bit plugged up over there. You can see that orange coolant down there. It's down there and it's leaking out of there. You can see some orange coolant coming through and it's filling up this orifice right here very slowly. There's some over there too. So it's leaking out of one of these also. You can see those wet tubes. It's just corroding all around. They either have bad welds. I mean, the thing is over 20 years old. so. 20 years old so it's uh you know it's past its useful life it's time to replace it let's get the rest of this disconnected and i'm going to show you the new heat exchanger we have so there's a number of hoses you need to disconnect these clamps hold it to the motor there's more hoses on this side that we need to get you have one of these air systems here to purge the water out for winterization you need to unbolt this from the top also and this hand pump too comes right off Okay, we got these three hoses off, and a lot of coolant came out. Probably got two gallons or so in there. Put this plastic on so it just doesn't get all over the fuel pump. Now I have to get the hard side over there and disconnect the rest of those hoses. All right, we got all the brackets disconnected, all the hoses disconnected. The air fitting here is taken off over there. These hoses are taken off. They were the most difficult ones. I'm trying to squeeze back in there. But uh, we should be all disconnected now. I'm going to lift it out and take a look at it. All right, here it is out of its place. And I found something quite interesting. Now that I can see on the inside of those tubes. Look at that. There's like stones or deposits in there. 
Now I've been having an overheating problem on the other motor, but it's not leaking. And it looks as though we would need a flush in there. I don't know if that's rust globules or what. But um, it's not looking too good in there. That is the coolant side, not the raw water side. So there should be so rocks and sand and all in there. So I don't know what that is. So uh, we matched it up with the new one. It seems like everything's in the right place. I'll show you the new one now. So here is the new module. Now this is an OEM. Um, I was actually able to get my hands on one that's identical to the OEM, but it actually has some enhancements. One being here is that it has a zinc. And surprisingly, the original Mercruiser heat exchanger does not have a zinc port, which is odd. So uh, maybe that's why I have the leak that it corroded out inside. But other than that, it's identical. It's made of the same material. And the fittings are all, or appear to be in the same place. Comes with all new uh, pressure cap. And there you can see, looks a lot cleaner on the new one. No stones in there. It looks like coolant flows a lot better. So uh, this should definitely be an improvement as far as cooling goes. Now I'm gonna have to do the other motor. <laughs> Check that out. That probably needs a new one too. So the best part about this, I didn't even hear about this company. It's called Mr. Cool. It's uh, not from Mercruiser. Uh, Mr. Cool is a company that makes aftermarket heat exchangers for all sorts of uh, motors. So um, the best part is, is that it's a lot cheaper than OEM. Yeah, I usually don't like getting non-OEM parts, but Mercruiser heat exchanger is about $3,000 brand new. And this one here was under 100. So definitely worth at least uh, checking it out, trying it. Um, it appears to be an exact replacement. It has the, uh, even the, the orifice here for the blue drain cap that I took off on the other one. It's just floating around here somewhere. But um, yeah, definitely gonna try this out and hopefully this works and I'm gonna do the same thing to the other motor. So, Mr. Cool, let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay, here it is, the heat exchanger out. Here's the bracket that it sits on, hose clamps to hold it in place. Here's our hoses. And you got three on this side. So, uh, all right, we're gonna gently put the new one in its place, line everything up, and start putting the hoses on. Should go on a lot easier than coming off. All right, our new heat exchanger is on. It wasn't too bad. Hardest part is lining up the hoses and getting those clamps in the right positions. We got everything tightened down. Got my reservoir back up. And we're gonna start filling it. Hopefully we don't have leaks. Right, there's a bit of a trick when you filling up the reservoir. There's a bleeder right here. You need to crack this open and as you're putting coolant in here. You wait until you see coolant coming out of this breather and then you can continue filling it up. But um, you wanna crack this up as it's heating up and let any air bubbles out. If you have any pockets in the system, air pockets, they'll purge out. And then of course, fill up the reservoir there. Check for leaks, get it up to running temperature. Keep a fingers crossed. All right, we put just over a gallon of coolant in there. I'm starting to see it, the filler neck, and it's starting to come out of the bleeder here. So I'm gonna tighten up this bleeder so we don't leak right now. And then fill up everything to the neck and the expansion tank over there. All right, we got it running, but we got a water leak. So the water was coming out of the end cap, not the hoses. This was put on by the factory, like that. Uh, it seemed like it was tight. 
This is quite different from the OEM seal. Here it is on the business end. So I decided to take open up the side that's not leaking. See if it was put together any different. It doesn't look like it. The O-ring goes right over the nut. And that seals up there. So I'm gonna put it back together the same way. Alright, I put it back on, tightened it up. Let's check it again. Alright, it's no longer leaking. Probably just needed to be tightened up a little bit. I'm going to let it run, get up the temperature a bit, and then uh, check the levels. Bleed off any air. Got a bleeder here. Let's see how it looks. We got some bubbles. We'll just do that every so often, get the air out of the system, and then top it off as needed. I got it up to the hot line right now, so it'll flow down into the motor. But we're looking good. Check the temperature in a little bit. Manifolds feel nice and cool. Let everything warm up and take some readings. Well, this is why you check for leaks. I forgot to put this clamp on. It had slid all the way down here on this big pipe. And, uh, this started leaking here when we got some pressure in the system. So uh, caught that right away. Now we'll start her up again and double check everywhere. All right, we're looking good. Bled the system, got all the air out, no leaks. Just gotta check these when you start it. Maybe they didn't tighten it enough. But um, engine's running at 159 degrees, which seems like a few degrees cooler than it usually idled at, at least. Won't really know until we get it up on plane, but um, so far promising. Just got to clean it up around here a little bit. And likely going to hit the next motor with this refurbish replacement of the Mercruiser heat exchanger. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.